Welcome to 2021 Las Vegas Lights uh, Media Day. Uh, a lot of exciting things going on. As I like to say, the lights are back on. Uh, you can see the lights at the end of the tunnel. We are incredibly, incredibly excited to be back here with a full capacity crowd uh, this Saturday. It's been 20 months. Uh, obviously, as it has been for everyone, especially in our community, uh, it, has been a, it was a very difficult 2020. Uh, I want to uh, say we are, uh, my family, 100% committed to keeping professional soccer in Las Vegas. There was never any doubt, even in the darkest of times, and we couldn't be more excited to be back in 2021. Um, uh, I will start with some, some sad news that we announced yesterday, right? We all kind of, you, you can say with a smile on your face, but Dottie the Lama, right, uh, uh, passing on, right? She had been a part of the, the club from the very beginning. Uh, so uh, her sister Dolly will still be here on Saturday, and stay tuned in the coming weeks uh, as we potentially get Dolly some new friends. So stay tuned for that. Uh, the big news for this season is obviously the individual here to my left and the partnership that we've done with Major League Soccer's uh, Los Angeles Football Club. Uh, I've had a lot of questions about what does this mean, what, what does the future of it mean, uh, why, why did you do it? And the answer was very simple, uh, we wanted to get better. And we knew that we had brought the world's most popular sport to the world's most entertaining city here in Las Vegas uh, three plus years ago. And we knew that there was an incredible fan base here that uh, one that we had tapped into, but also that had been here for 30 years that was just waiting for professional soccer to be here. Um, and as I looked at the roster from 1 through 18, as I looked at the soccer operations department from top to bottom, realizing we had to bring in people that had the expertise to be able to do this. And so through a variety of conversations, prior relationships, uh, kicking the tires on a variety of different ways of how do we structure the 2021 season, uh, I'll just say publicly again, I couldn't be more proud, excited, and thankful to Major League Soccer's Los Angeles Football Club uh, for partnering with us in this affiliation. Uh, it has opened the doors uh, for a variety of ways to resources, to scouting, to uh, player access uh, that we wouldn't have. We'll talk about one here with, with Danny Mazowski here in a few minutes uh, that we wouldn't be able to have as an independent team. What the future holds, we don't know, right? But we, I can say here publicly without any doubt, and I, and I believe LAFC would say the same thing, we are committed to finding a way to make this work. We are committed to working together. We are committed to growing this. And you can't judge any partnership on a month, a couple weeks. You look at this in the, in the long term. And we are committed to figuring out uh, to, to how do we maximize this partnership. And there's just too many rich resources with our fan base and our community and the success that LAFC has had in a very short amount of time. Uh, for those of you that don't know, they were in the finals of the CONCACAF Champions League in only their fourth year of existence just a few months ago. Uh, so it's incredibly, it's incredibly humbling and, and exciting for us to be able to partner with them. Uh, the other things for the 2021 season, uh, the most interesting team in the world will continue, fun promotions. Uh, we'll have theme nights throughout the year. Obviously in the past we did the Golden Knights night. We'll do a night this year with the Raiders. Uh, we've got the $10,000 helicopter cash drop. We've got the world's largest water balloon fight. Uh, all of those things and more will continue. Uh, you'll continue to see that, right? And it's really important for me that we not just tap into the local soccer community, but we tap into the local community. And those that may not be as comfortable with the sport of soccer or as familiar with the sport of soccer, we have to continue to find ways to make sure that everyone feels welcome here on a Saturday night, uh, part of our soccer fiestas. Uh, a key part of that is uh, fan engagement and making sure that we make this incredibly affordable. Uh, I, we won in 2019 Best of Las Vegas, Best Value in Las Vegas sport, Pro Sports, and it, I'm committed to winning that every year for the next uh, you know, decade plus. We have got to find a way to make this affordable, especially after the difficulty so many people in our community went through last year. Uh, so we've done a handful of promotions this year. We've partnered with Terrible's Gas Stations to do the Terrible's $10 tickets. We're doing $10 tickets all summer long as part of our Summer of Soccer series and kids everywhere in the stadium for $5. There is now no excuse why anyone in Las Vegas, whether you are living in Summerlin, North Las Vegas, downtown, wherever you live, whatever your socioeconomic status is, wherever, however life treated you in 2020, everyone has the ability to afford these tickets. And I wanna see the place full because of that, right? That we want to make sure that this is the team of the people and the sport of the people. Uh, another thing that we've done, we've partnered with the Castro Verde Law Group uh, and incredibly excited about this new partnership. And one of the things they talked about is how do we do something big? How do we start this partnership 
uh, with Vegas' back, right? When we started to see that Vegas was opening and how do we do something around them. And so they basically, as part of their partnership, are they're underwriting 2,000 donated tickets for every home game in June to go to frontline workers. And we started talking about what's a frontline worker, right? Obviously, the definition has become very murky in, in, in recent years, and we're using that term. And Alex DeCastroverde and his brother Orlando said, frontline worker is however someone defines it themselves. We're not here to, to try and, you know, tomato, tomato, tomato. We want anyone who considers themselves to be a frontline worker to be able to go to the Lights website and to be able to register for free tickets uh, for them and their family. So that is an incredible thing that we're doing for 2,000 uh, individuals uh, for all four home games in the month of June. So I'd love, honestly, my friends in the media, if we can get that word out as much as possible to say thank you to everyone who helped Las Vegas get back. Uh, obviously, we will continue with uh, we call the coolest seats in sports. Uh, Ten uh, poolside seats. Uh, those will continue this year. Already sold out for Saturday. And then we've obviously added something new and exciting. I call it the most COVID compliant seat in all of professional sports. Uh, thanks to my friend John Barr here to the left, who I'll introduce in a second. We'll have what's called Toyota Row. You all remember UNLV basketball and they had Gucci Row. Well, we've got Toyota Row. You can drive your car. If you register with us in advance, you can't just show up, right? We won't let you. You register in advance, you can drive your Toyota any type of Toyota into the, into the field and park on the field. You can watch in your car. I'd suggest watch on top of your car, but this will be the most unique type of seating that we've had. Uh, and again, it's a way to not just do our partnership with Toyota, but also a way to how do we take this old stadium and not be hamstrung by what Cashman Field is and the difficulties of it being an old stadium, but actually embracing it. I've also said, I want this to be uh, the, Professional, ba I want this to be the professional soccer, what Wrigley Field and Fenway Park is the professional baseball, right? We want to take uh, Cashman Field and all of its charm, and these are us finding ways to how do we work with every nook and cranny that in is in this building and create really fun experiences that people that may not be hardcore soccer fans, but are coming to one, two, three games a year and making them feel comfortable and having a fun experience at a very affordable price. Uh, the other thing, talking about fan experience, uh, if you've been to our games, you know we love confetti. Right? In year one, I'll be honest, we had dinky little confetti blowers, right? And if the wind was blowing the wrong way, you wouldn't even see it. In year two, we went and rented two, you know, big size confetti blowers, and the fans really enjoyed it. Well, this is what we're going to do this year. We have bought six industrial grade confetti blasters, double barrel, two footers uh, with CO2 canisters. This is going to be the most confetti that you've ever seen. Uh, we are going to have fun. I've always said I can't guarantee wins. I can't guarantee goals. But I can guarantee that every single person in this stadium is going to smile and have a good time. Even if you're the grumpiest old man in the history and you're here for the other team, you're going to have a fun time uh, at our games. And so that is part of the commitment of not just being affordable, but making sure that we're having fun. Um, and then the last thing before I introduce the, the, the coach and players is I, I, I want to introduce John Barr. And I know this may sound like it's self-serving and he's your sponsor, so you're bringing him out here. That's not the case, right? John has been at every single game from the very beginning. The Finley family has done an enormous amount, not just for local professional sports and amateur sports, but all different types of uh, community organizations. Uh, but, but obviously 2020 was a difficult year. Right, and uh, we are very thankful for our, uh, anyone who's ever partnered with us. We're thankful for our former partners, but we had an opportunity at the end of the year of understanding, trying to figure out how are we going to make this work? How are we going to figure this out? And how are we going to go find a partner? And we knew immediately that we wanted a hyper local partner. We wanted someone that understood the struggle that our community went through, that understands our community. And again, as we reach out to everyone in our community, whether they're a hardcore soccer fan or not, that it was something that resonated with them. Uh, and so, John, on behalf of the, my family and the entire organization, I, I'd love for you to just say a few words and, and just thank you again for everything that you've done for Las Vegas and for this club this season. Thank you, Brett. Um, I'm kind of honored and humbled. Um, didn't kind of expect to be sitting here in this position, but I'm glad I am. I want to say that the Finley family are 100% behind any activity in this city, but they embrace this one because of my love of soccer and Justin's love of soccer. Justin, as a lot of you maybe know, knew Brett actually when Brett was Orlando, yeah. correct Brett? Yeah. And was involved in an effort to bring an MLS team here, and we're going back six or seven years ago, and he was really near, with obviously everything stacked against him, quite frankly. Um, the lights is a natural transition from my perspective, being from where I'm from, and, and my love of football, soccer as a lot of people call it here and I understand that um, is is kind of only magnified in the sense that 
I love to be involved. I mean, I enjoy it. Um, and I really have all the faith. I'm very, very passionate. Um, maybe a little over the top at times, to be honest, but that's okay. He fits perfectly with us. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> and, you know, want to say again, Finley Toyota, the store that, that I run personally, and everyone involved, from Stephanie, who's my promotions manager, from the Finleys, which have been supporting sports, quite frankly, in this city for decades. I mean, it started way, way back with UNLV and when the basketball team was obviously very, very popular back in 1990 with Tarkanian. And now we have this opportunity to transition into what I believe is a hidden gem. I believe that there's no reason why this soccer team, I'll make sure I say soccer, mm -hmm. not football, this soccer team could not be the best in the league and, and go a long, long way. And I know we're 100% behind them. I know all of you feel the same way. And I'm really, really looking forward to this season. Thank you, John. Thank you. So, so next, it's, my, it's really my distinct honor uh, to introduce the man to my left. Uh, again, as we were evaluating everything during the off season and figuring out uh, what do we do from a coaching, from a roster perspective, there were lots of opportunities, lots of discussions. And as the conversations with LAFC became more and more uh, serious and robust and understanding the full, uh, the full resources that could be put behind an affiliation, John Thorrington, their co-president and, and oversees all their soccer operations called me and said, I, I think we've got the perfect guy. And this is an individual that I have known for many, many years. Uh, he grew up in, well, born in Illinois, grew up in, in Southern California, uh, went to Germany at the age of 20, and ended up staying with the exact same team for 17 straight years, took him to the Bundesliga, and set the record for the most, the longest continuous term with an American, with one team in Europe. Uh, I, I'm sure I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that as eloquently as I should. Uh, in 2002, he made the U.S. World Cup roster. In 2006, uh, unfortunately, he was injured in 2002. In 2006, he made the roster again, played significant minutes. And then, as we've had some good la laughs about, in 2010, he played every single minute for the U.S. Men's World Cup team while they beat uh, John Bars England. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of a lot of history at this table. Right? It felt but, like a win. <laughs> and he's known as the Mayor of Hanover. Yeah. Let's get it right. All right. Uh, and John had indicated that, that Steve is, was a coach on the field, and he had the exact same mindset. Uh, he had worked and played under Bob Bradley, who's the head coach at LAFC, and that there would be a real synergy of this. When I became most impressed uh, with Steve is when I realized that he had already received his highest coaching li licenses allowed, right, uh, with the UEFA Super A license, which was a real testament that during his playing career and immediately after it that he was seeking uh, the highest of licenses. And so while he has coached uh, in Germany for a handful of years, I'm incredibly happy to welcome his family back uh, here to the United States to leave a Las Vegas life. Thank you for those kind words. It's been uh, a, a fantastic transition, and I just want to say, um, you know, for all the reasons that Ahmed um, pointed out earlier that this project, this, this organization, um, was exciting to me um, about the future. I think it has a very bright future. And uh, it's one of the big reasons why I decided to be part of this and was ecstatic to be a part of it, um, fully knowing that it takes time to get this up and running. But um, the future is bright. Um, as we pointed out earlier, um, going, we are now getting out of this restricted zone that we've been <laughs> in for a, for a long, long time, which we're excited about. And I think the same should go for the live soccer team as well. So I think moving forward, it'll be an exciting group. It'll be an exciting project that I am um, fully diving into 100% uh, and have been there for a few weeks now, and we're making headway, and that's the most important thing right now. So um, it's extremely gratifying to finally be here at home at Cashman, and so, and I know our players are excited about tomorrow and the incredible fans that we've already seen and we know um, virtually, um, but we'll now get a taste of that tomorrow, so we're excited to be here. Saturday. Finally. Saturday. <laughs> We're excited uh, to finally be here and, and uh, get a feel for that, what this actually feels like, and to give our players that little extra needed edge to, you know, to get our first W. Yeah. Excellent. Thank well you, Coach. Uh, next, I'll introduce uh, the individual on my far right, uh, Danny Muzovsky. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll share a story that when we were launching the team in 2017, uh, or we announced the team in 2017 and, and knew that we'd be starting in 2018. Danny, born and raised in Henderson, was a graduating senior at UNLV where he would 
go on to be an all-time top five in goals, assists, points, minutes, everything else that you, you could think of as a striker, uh, and making an attempt to try and sign Danny, right? And saying that that's the kind of player that fits the exact profile of what we want the lights to be, right? Danny, rightfully so, right? Pursued the, the dream of Major League Soccer, uh, got drafted, now signed with LAFC, uh, where he started in the CONCACAF Champions League final just a few months ago. And he's been loaned to us for this weekend. And uh, I'll just say, this is the type of thing that makes me so excited about this partnership, right? And not to put pressure on, on, on Danny here, make, make it awkward. But this is the type of a profile of a player that we wouldn't have access to otherwise. Uh, so I'm incredibly grateful again to LAFC. And this is where I see the benefits long term really starting to pay off to be able to have access where a player like Danny Mazowski, born and raised in Las Vegas, has the ability to train day in and day out and play Major League Soccer minutes, but also to continue his development with the Las Vegas Lights simultaneously. So, Danny, a couple words? Yeah, it's good. I mean, it's always a dream, you know, to play for your hometown team, so I have an opportunity to do that. I've played twice two away games so far, and this will be an opportunity to play at home in front of friends, family, on the professional level, so I'm looking forward to it. And, and talk about uh, your time at UNLV and what it means to be, you know, how so you didn't have professional soccer when you were growing up here, now you have the lights and... Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I grew up here, played local soccer, and then I played for the local college team here at UNLV. And exactly, like you said, there was not that local team, professional team here. So now it, it is here, and it's kind of funny how now it's brought me back here through LAFC. So, yeah, it's definitely going to be a special feeling. Excellent. And then to my immediate right, Danny Chrysostomo, uh, a uh, USL veteran, uh, played re previously with Orange County uh, and signed by the Lights uh, earlier this year. So you've been here as an opponent, so talk about your excitement to play here as a home player. Yeah, I mean, personally it's been almost a year since I played in front of a home crowd, so I'm definitely excited for the environment. Every time we came out here for away games, the environment was, you know, as you said, most interesting club. Um, yeah, and I love it, and I can't wait to play in front of the fans. Excellent. So we can take a couple of Q&A, and then we can do one-on-ones, one -on but if there's any questions for the group. Brett, you mentioned, and you keep mentioning, you know, it takes time, you know, it's a long process, you know, the future's bright. When we had you on the show, you mentioned that this is just a one-year thing with the LAFC. So you keep talking about the future, and it takes time. What is the future? So the, the affiliation is a one-year agreement. That doesn't mean it can't be expanded. It doesn't mean it can't be extended. It can't mean it, mean it can't go on in a variety of different ways. So we are, I, I can speak for myself, and I, and I believe LAFC would say the same thing. We are working as if though this is a long-term affiliation. We are working as if though, how do we continue to build something, right? We're not trying to build something just for the short term. We're trying to build something and a foundation here so to bring uh, benefits to both organizations, both in the short, medium, and long term. Anything else before we go? Uh, you still sound as excited as you were uh, when you were on the team. Because uh, I got paying customers again, right? The party's back on. This place has been asleep for 20 months. Is this uh, where you picture the team to be um, when you started the team? or? Uh... So, so, so I, I'm, I'm going to answer the question both on the field and off the field. Uh, off the field? I think we've surpassed 99% of expectations, right? That we are in the top five in attendance, that we're averaging over 8,000 fans a game, that the baseball team left this place for dead. There was, we didn't know what the future of Cashton Field was, and we have brought professional sports back to Cashton Field. We have brought a light and an energy and a ole, 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 singing and dancing and going and having fun on Saturday nights. So I think that the expectation of the community back in 2017 when we launched this at the Zappos Theater was, this is just another uh, alphabet soup, minor league sport that is gonna come and go, right? And I think we have surpassed all of those expectations off the field uh, that this is a long-term, uh, this is a part of the community for years and years and decades to, to come. Now I'll also say off the field, I don't think we've even fully scratched the surface. I think we're gonna have 8,000 plus people here on Saturday night and I think we can go get 15,000. I think we are just scratching the surface. We have the demographic, we have the size, we have Las Vegas, we have a centralized stadium that is all our own. I think we have sky's the limit. So from my perspective, we have not even come close to being what we can be as a United Soccer League team. Off the field, I haven't, I haven't hidden from the fact at all, it's been really disappointing. We have not met expectations that were set by me and set by the, the fans. And that was part of the uh, remit in the off season is we've got to go figure out a better way to do this, right? And going and partnering with someone to LAFC that has had 
uh, lots of experience and lots of success in a short amount of time. Those are the types of partners that I want to work with uh, to get the soccer side right. So, uh, you know, it's early in this season and it's early in our life as, a, as an organization. I still think we have an enormous amount of upside, but the, the expectation is that both the on and off field, we, we just scratch the surface. So, according to the, we all know that Vegas is hunger of soccer and football, and I, I can speak for the Hispanic community, you know what the football means to us, and it's hunger of football results. And according to your amazing experience as, as a player, you know about the pressure of the team. Maybe we, we here don't have a pressure 